feel their presence, that you know that they're there, and that you care that they matter. So we appreciate that you all are here. And uh, without further ado, we're going to get we're going to jump right into content. Today's uh, webinar is all about engaging students in the online environment. We've got a lot of great tips and tricks for you along the way. But before I get into that, Marnie, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, go ahead and skip down a couple slides. I think you got me in there. <laughs> I think I do. There you are. Hi there, I'm Marnie Landry. Um, I'm the out STEM Outreach Manager for Grand Canyon University, but my background is a teacher and a lot of uh, STEM and technology integration. Thank you so much, Marnie. And I, I want to give Marnie a huge shout out right here. She put together so much content for you in the last week. It has been mind boggling. It's hard to actually take and pare down the content that we want to share with you, but we know that we, we believe that bite-sized chunks are the way to go for us and for our students. And so today we've got some bite-sized chunks regarding engagement. So thank you, Marnie, for, for introducing yourself and for being such a rock star on our team. We would not be who we are without you. Um, I do want to I do want to also let you know that um, we have a survey um, that we want you to answer at the end or in the middle, whenever you want to uh, fill out our, our online survey. The reason why we do this is to get you a professional development certificate at the end. So we're using Zoom meeting, not Zoom webinar. So we're not giving you like a, a PDF document or something like that uh, as a result. So what I need you to do is fill out the survey so that you can get your, um, your education credit for this. So anyway, I wanted to make sure that you knew a little bit about the survey and Amanda will put that into the chat uh, so that you have that at your convenience. And and my name is Corey. As I said uh, before, we just are so blessed to have you with us today. Uh, I have some, ex my last experience in the classroom was as a media specialist. So I was like, I used to call myself like the bartender in a way. Everybody would come into the, uh, come into the, the, the social lounge and, and ask me all kinds of questions about technology. So I think what I, my, my vision there or my, my talent was to give advice. And that's all we're doing today is we're giving advice. So we want you to take what you can, what serves you and, and leave the rest. If there's something that doesn't serve you today, don't even worry about it. Just one tip, one small tip and then really integrate that. I think that's the way to go. But I do have some other teaching experience in Spanish, ESL and computers, uh, com computer, computer systems. So great to be with you. So um, the first thing we're gonna talk about today is really Zoom. And that's what we, we've sort of already started, haven't we? We started in the chat by making people feel comfortable. Uh, you have, it, it seems so odd. I mean, I'm talking to myself here in this house where nobody else is hearing me. And it seems so strange. There's so many people on the other end. I want you to know that having your face on screen helps your students understand that you really are a, a, a real live human. Last night, my daughter was on, um, on Zoom with her professor and it was great to just see him and, and it was neat as a parent to be able to see how he interacted with his students. So um, learn from each other. When you have Zoom opportunities, go check them out. So let's just look a little bit of, of, uh, about our navigation here in Zoom. We've got, um, we've got our, our audio and video over here. We have invitations to be able to invite people to meetings and we have our participants and you can click on that participant list to see all the people who are here, your screen share, a chat, and a, and a record. And so any of your Zoom uh, conferences, you can record, which is, which is quite nice. So those are the key icons. And if that's all you use, absolutely fine. There are some other uh, benefits to using Zoom as a, an engagement tool online. And so let's go uh, check those out as well. Um, before we get started any further, we want to make sure to let you know that we have a why that defines who we are and what we do and what we bring to you each day. And our why is to empower, educate, and inspire our communities so they take action to fulfill their purpose and serve others. If you've been over to our tip of the day at our YouTube channel, you'll notice that every time I end that, I ask you to empower your students to fulfill their purpose. Thank you for allowing us to fulfill ours. So let's, uh, let's get started. Uh, sometimes the thing your students need the most has nothing to do with what's on your lesson plan. <laughs> I think this really speaks to relationship. Marnie, did you wanna say something about this? Um, I just had that preface our objectives because even though we might be talking about something, this is really what we're talking about <laughs> for today's, so. Thanks, Marnie. 
It's so true. And how often do our lesson plans go totally differently than where we think they might go? And, and bear with us. If that happens to us today, we're going to just model what we do in the meantime. So we want to give you some very clear object objectives today. By the end of this class, we would like you to have known or see the use of the 5E model to share and review online engagement tools. Remember that we are a, most of us are educators. And even if we don't have that professional certificate behind our name, we're parents, we're um, caregivers, we're ministry developers, we are educators in all of those, in all of those terms. So we want to make sure that um, what we bring to you is sound in pedagogy, and we want to, you to know a couple of tools that are based in theory and grounded in theory so that we can bring to you the most quality of engagement tools and whatever tips, tricks we provide please know that they are based in theory. So we're gonna look at the 5E model today. We're also going to evaluate your readiness for live interaction instruction. And uh, it, it seems like you guys are so ready. We got so much just before 10 o'clock, so I'm real excited about that. We're gonna evaluate the webinar and earn a PD certificate. So again, don't forget to fill out that survey so that you can get your certificate. And then we are blessed to have um, Dan Egler with us today who will be doing our closing prayer. Uh, so thank you so much for everyone being here and this is where we're going today. So online tools for engagement using the 5E model. All right, so Marty, I wonder if you would like to uh, either control this or uh, navigate over to kahoot.it. So go ahead and let's do that together as a group. Now I have a phone here. I've got my iPhone here. I've got my Android phone here. So I'm going to go ahead and, and, and just be obnoxious and jump right in. So go ahead and navigate over to kahoot.it if you're not already there. And I, uh, I even like to use maybe even another browser just, just because. Why not, right? Kahoot. Okay. So the point was you can do it in a separate uh, browser, you can do it in a separate window on your computer, you can do it on a, um, a separate device. And in just a moment, I'll share my screen and I'll give you the game pin. So we're going to give everybody a moment to go there. Um, if you've never used Kahoot, make sure you get Kahoot.it. Um, if you have used Kahoot, um, the purpose of us showing you this is so you can see how you can use it in a virtual live environment quite easily. Okay, so Kahoot IT. So I'm gonna go ahead and take over the screen. And I'm looking, and I'm just going to Kahoot IT on all of my devices. So we'll see how long it actually so, takes me to get Ms. there. Corey, it says you have disabled my screen sharing. <laughs> oh, well, I, I, that's not very nice of me. How about now? Give it a go now. Host disable participant screen sharing. So I think I'm oh. considered a participant. Oh, there we go. Just a moment. Just if you see, it's, it's just technological troubleshooting. We're all about it over here. There you go. Sorry, Marnie. I wasn't trying to be uh, possessive or territorial. I promise. All right. Okay. So those of you new at it, there's the game. Oh, you can't see me pointing at that. <laughs> it's six seven seven two six six and. Ooh, my nickname. You'll never guess who I am. That's right. All right, now don't get too excited. Don't, don't keep spinning. I've already been spinning three or four times now. Going to my other game pin. All right, so I'm not sure how many people we had in the room. I think it was about 70. So I'll wait just a few more moments to let more people join. 79. Marty, I really Marty. like 79. Oh, 79, cool. You like what? Uh, well, as Carol was just saying, we have 79 people in the chat or in the in the webinar, which is fam fabulous. And Marty, I love that Kahoot allows you to use a different name. So you don't have to worry about those kids that jump in like uh, and say say weird things like you know coolest kid ever. Anyway, lots of fun. All right, I'm going to start the game in just a moment. 
If you are not in already, don't worry. The login and PIN number will still be showing at the bottom of the screen, so you can even you can still get in after the game starts. And that's the setting in Kahoot that you can have. And if you hear my dogs barking, it's because they didn't pay attention that I told them I'd be on a live webinar today. All right, here we go. Um, the question will show on the screen. You have to answer on your device. Which could you not give up for one month? Oh my goodness, easy. Listen to her scream. Everybody's <laughs> answer. It's awesome. Oh, let's see. So who do we have here? Oh, we got some junk food junkies, I see. <laughs> Shower, oh, come on. You can go without <laughs> showering. <laughs> That's good stuff. Um, but we've got some tech addicts in here. I have to admit, I was one of those. I could not give up technology for one month. I'll take a sponge bath before I'll give up my technology. <laughs> Absolutely. I can't agree more, Marnie. All right. Here we go. Next question. There's only three, so don't worry. Oh, bronze cheetah. First place. Marnie, okay, that's not go. me. <laughs> so Marnie, did you upload that picture or was that something that came with Kahoot? Uh, that was a free image in Kahoot. They have a whole host of free images that you can use. That's awesome. And Marnie, can I add more than one question in Kahoot or more than two questions? Question, I mean, answers or questions? Uh, answers, sorry about that. Yes, yeah, so you can, I think you can add up to four, four answers. Awesome. All right, lots of tiny rhinos. That was me, I'm a tiny rhino. All right, um, next, let's see who's winning. Oh, the great Yeti has moved into number one. Ah, oh, followed by the purple goat, otherwise known as GCU Lopes Antelope. Oh, there's the Lopes, there's the <laughs> purple goat. Lopes it up. All right, final question. How would you rank yourself in virtual instruction readiness? Oof. Oh, silly me, I'm touching the screen, my computer and not my, my uh, device. I did that yesterday, don't feel bad. Ooh, we're all over oh, the map there. We are all over the map. Oh, I want to know who my, if you are a 910 and you don't mind sharing out in the chat box, I'd like to know if you are one of the 910s because I'm, I'm impressed. I'm on my, I rank myself a 7-8. <laughs> so yeah, let us know if you're a 910. Um, the other reason it's a value here is that if, uh, in this chat box, we now have a, a network of people who are interested in the same thing, and here's a good chance for you guys to connect with one another, even though we're all over the, the nation. So let's uh, yeah, see ever, anybody is. Happy Goose in. for the win. Oh, no, for third place. Let it be me, let it be me, let it be me. Great Yeti. It is not me. Way to go, Great Yeti. Thank you so much for playing our Kahoot game. That's awesome. Hey, you know what, Marnie? It, Kahoot reminds me of asking, it just reminds me of asking, how did you use it in your classroom? Um, I like to use it for a couple things. I used it for fun review. I used it for student learning, meaning I let students write their own Kahoots that we would play in class. And even to, though sometimes students would not get or wouldn't preload the correct answers, it was fine because we do it in class and then half the class would yell, that's not right. And then we talk about, well, it wasn't right. So it was a great learning tool. Um, and then I did use it kind of for a formative assessment tool just as I was moving through a unit. Um, I used it a lot of ways. So, you know, Marnie, what would you say to the question? You know, Kahoot's a great tool, but I get frustrated when students um, are, are answering quickly. So is it really a tool that allows the, the, the winner to answer quickly, but not necessarily learn the material? Does it intimidate students uh, in that sense? And, and what would you say to that? 
Yes, so this can be a great tool and um, it's, it's a lot of fun. A lot of students really like it, but it can be intimidating with that timer. You have the ability to adjust that timer, number one. Number two, I didn't show you, but in the background, you can make it a challenge and you can actually send it home, like homework. So you don't have to host a live game like we're doing. You can send it and students can do it on their own timetable. So it just becomes like a fun interactive quiz that they can do on their own. There's a second tool that we're not showcasing here, but we can definitely showcase at another time called um, Quizzes. That has a similar format, but instead students are competing against themselves, not against one another on the time. So. Super, super great um, comment there. I, I really liked Kahoot in my classroom when I assigned it to students. So students make the Kahoot for our class, but I didn't want to do it for the entire class. I had small groups. So each student had a laptop computer and a group of say four, and they had created the, the Kahoot, but before they were able to show it to their group of four, they had to to go over it with me first to make sure that the content was correct. So that's another way to use Kahoot. But I do, uh, I do, I do like, like those comments that I'm seeing in the chat as well. Thank you for, for lending your tips and tricks about how you use Kahoot. Go ahead, Marty. Um, just to, if you were looking at my screen and if you haven't used Kahoot, it just has nice reporting that you can kind of get some feedback on which ones were right. So it's a great formative assessment tool. But if in fact one of these were right, I could go back and look at my teaching or the, um, the, the resources that I was supplying students to clarify their misunderstandings. So that's just really why I like uh, Kahoot for what it does on the backside. So Fant fantastic. Back. And you know what? Uh, we have a we have a question in the chat that asks about special education and if um, does anybody use it with students that have mild to moderate disabilities. So if you if you do use it for special ed, please feel free to 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 add in the chat uh, that that question from Kristen. Thank you so much for asking that question. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and send it back to you, I think, or. Okay. Um, or wait a minute, you know, I'm, I'm gonna keep it because I just realized I'm gonna need to share something else in a moment, so. Perfect, all right. So we'll just uh, uh, start here at this next slide, which is all about relationships. Well, we talked a little, about, a little bit about Kahoot, and I think the important piece of that, um, other than all these awesome tips, keep those coming in the chat in regards to why Kahoot is such a strong and powerful um, formative assessment tool and just an engagement tool in general is because it builds relationship. Now, many of us have heard of those three R's, relationship, rigor, and relevance. And I always, I'm always interested to hear people say those because for me, it should go relationship, relevance, rigor. And the reason I say that is because without a relationship, you can't build trust. Without trust, you really don't have relevance. And if you don't build that relevance into students' lives, they're not going to trust what you say. They're going to say, oh, that's just what my mom says, right? And then the next thing is rigor. I don't believe you can have academic rigor without really building that strong relationship. So online, no different than in the, in the classroom face-to-face, -face, I think we need to really focus on relationships. So Kahoot is a great way to, to focus on a relationship. And um, and, and this is very interesting D uh, data and research. You have many authors saying the reason why kids come to school, the student-teacher relationship is the single most important factor in any classroom with regards to classroom management and engagement. If you are not building that relationship, oh my goodness, there's just, there's not much further that, than you can go. So luckily, many of us who are teaching in this COVID situation already built relationships in a physical classroom and now we're online. But don't think for a heartbeat that we cannot stop there. We have to continue to nurture, sustain, and maintain relationships. Go ahead, Marty. I just want to comment. I see some comments in the box still talking about Kahoot everywhere from how oh, I use it in all different ways. So I've never heard of it before. So I'm really glad about that. Um, I just want to make sure that we clarify we are talking about at this point a virtual environment. And I just wanted you we wanted you to see how easy it was to host if you do have a live time with your students, how easy it is to host that. And it can be for assessment or it can just be relationship building questions, just something fun to kind of get them feeling engaged. So it can be used virtually quite easily. Thank so you. considering um, these tech tools, which you may have heard about um, in the past, more than you think in your mind, well, they're just for fun. I don't really know how to use them in, a, in an academic way. 
here's a, um, we're going to kind of tie this into the 5E model. So some of you may be familiar with the 5E model of lesson planning. Um, some of you may not. It's just a cycle of instruction that really does put a lot of the onus on the student, um, depending on the way that you write your lessons. Um, so engage, explore, explain, elaborate, evaluate. So our Kahoot right there could have been an engage. We could have been, you know, looking at, you know, what you already know. Explore would be us maybe giving you some material to kind of dig deeper. The explain, this could be the synchronous part, meaning where you're giving your direct live instruction to clarify some of those misunderstandings. The elaborate is the time for students to kind of put together what they've learned and then evaluate where um, they're evaluating what they learned and you also can evaluate what they've learned. Um, what I do want to point out is across the top, there's a bit.ly link where we have created a template for you for this exact uh, 5E model lesson plan. Um, don't worry, it will also be in the, uh, the description section of the YouTube video. And I'm just gonna show that to you up here on my screen. So it's just a Google Doc. When you enter or click that bit.ly link, you get your own version of the document that you can just type in directly. Um, what's also nice about this, Corey, you were talking about this, if, if an administrator and you're wondering how the heck do I evaluate teachers and teaching now that we're in a completely different environment. Um, so a 5e template's a really nice and easy way to, to evaluate, I think. Absolutely. And, and again, um, and I put this in the chat as well, is that the 5e model, engage, explore, explain, elaborate, evaluate, those five e's are really important for, for student choice, voice and choice, and I think differentiation. So if you look at this template here, each one of those pieces of the 5E model could allow your principal, your leader, your head of schools to understand that you are engaging and this is how you are having your students engage. The neat part of the student choice here is that they can decide what tool they use. So if you have a a myriad of tools that they can choose from, then that allows them some student choice. Now, granted, some students may be in the special education world or, or younger, you know, the littles, as we say, they might need more guidance in the choice. So, uh, Marnie even mentioned it earlier today, we have Kahoot, but we also have Quizzes. It's very similar, uh, but different in format. So, a, a child who wants to use one or the other, there's the choice. Even if it's the choice between something that's pretty similar, they feel more autonomous and more engaged when they have that choice. So really good point to make there, Marnie. Thank you. Um, I also see that Carol had put the template in the chat. So if you guys want to look at that oh, template right away, you are welcome to do that. Thank you, Carol, for doing that. Thanks. Um, this next slide is um, filled in from the template, but to give you a better understanding of of what engage, what does that really look like in your classroom? And you already do these things, it's just a different way of compartmentalizing um, the way you would teach a lesson, um, and especially how that could look in a virtual world. So what does that look like? What is the action? And on the right column are a lot of technology and virtual tools that you can use to accomplish that. Um, some of you heard or used a lot of these, some of these may all be new to you. Um, either way, what we have put in here are definitely tools that we have all used, number one. I've used them, and I believe, as I look at this, I've used every single one with students. Number two, everything in here has free versions, and I'm a cheap person, so I only use the free versions of everything. Um, and we know that they're widely used, so a lot of the kinks have been pulled out. So I think um, if you look on those, uh, you might recognize some of the tools. And again, the bit.ly at the top will go to your own template. And I'm just gonna show you, again, when you click on it, it should, uh, I think I put it in there correctly, we'll make a copy for you and you can just type in it on your own. Like if you have other tools, you can add to it. So it's just gonna be a Google document. Thank you, Marnie. And I appreciate you um, creating these templates for our, our listeners. Um, what's so great about Marnie's templates is that you can just, she automatically allows you to make a copy and then you can have this 
and you can use that in your classroom, in your school as an evaluator. This might be a really great tool for a principal to use immediately um, as an online tool to let your teachers know that yes, I know it's different and it's difficult, but here's some accountability, not just for them, but for them to use with their students. So thank you so much for that, Marnie. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Um, Someone so says that they're having problems with the, yep, no, it's public. You may have to, I see several people saying they're having to accept permission. Uh, depending if you're on a uh, school machine, you may have to say, yes, I need permission to use the bit.ly, but it should be a public document. Or you can always uh, uh, also try to log in using your personal Gmail account. Um, if you are a Google user that are using like your Google Apps for Education, um, that you, you might have some luck changing over to your personal Gmail account. It should be public on the web for anyone to use, but that might also be an item there. But again, there's Marnie troubleshooting right there. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm doing the same thing on my end to yeah. make sure that it looks like it's public and it looks like it's public to me here. Yeah. But um, also using your personal Gmail account is a nice, nice tip when you're sharing with people who don't have um, domain rights to your particular domain. So, um, all right, I so see lots of people saying that. I will definitely, hmm, I don't know why you're here. So I will definitely fix that by the time we get off for sure. Um, and those links will absolutely be in the, in the comments um, below, the uh, below the video on our YouTube channel, I guarantee it. Thanks, Marnie, appreciate yeah. it. If you wanna um, hand it back over too, I'm, I'm happy to to take over if you want to do some a little bit of troubleshooting. But ultimately what, uh, you know, and Scott made a point earlier in the chat about relationships and bringing that, that, that point up about, you know, relationship relevance and rigor. And I want to just clarify that we will also be adding some tips and tricks on our YouTube channel in regards to social emotional learning. There are a lot of resources that uh, Castle and other groups and as far as counseling services are concerned, we don't want to forget about our counselors out there because often many of us wear several hats and those hats that we wear determine how much our students feel like they're supported. So this is a tough time. I, I think that, you know, especially like, let's take, for example, my, my own son who, who, yeah, he's excited to not be on, to, to not be in school. But you know, after a few days, it's going to wear off. And I realize that I, as a parent, I have to help hold him accountable. Well, it's hard to do that while I'm working my full-time job as well. So have some, some, some mercy, some forgiveness, some grace with um, your parents that are that are working with their own children and remember that they're trying as hard as they can and perhaps some of that um, relationship piece would be great to to share with parents as well so to let them know hey it's okay if your kid isn't doing school for as many hours as you think he or she should be doing school but you know get them outside to change their environment and remember i think this the the strongest piece we can offer our, our children at home is just that unconditional love. And remember that giving them that love instead of giving them your frustration will allow them to feel more empowered to, to do the work that they need to, to do at home. So um, we do have at Grand Canyon University some, some really neat options. Thanks, Marty. <laughs> some options for, for you all um, to take a, take a live tour uh, of GCU's campus. So there are lots of different ways in which uh, you can come online with your students. We're using Zoom right now. It's, Zoom is like the bright new shiny thing in some ways, but in other ways like Google, uh, Google Meet, which is kind of new, used to be Google Video Chat. That definitely is out there. WebEx, Skype, Ring Central, Loom, GoToMeeting. There's all kinds of different platforms out there. Choose the one that's best for you. And we'd like to show you how we use Zoom at Grand Canyon University for our live tours. So those are happening during this time. And maybe you just want to take a little break with your students to say, hey, let's go look at a university campus. Let's see what this is all about. And uh, they're, uh, in this particular presentation, you'll be able to see the daily tours from 9 to 3. There is a Zoom link, and you and your students can take a virtual tour. Maybe just to take a virtual walk. Isn't that an interesting concept? I also we'll recommend sure going to... outside. Yeah. And we'll put all these links, um, I'm, I don't know if one of our partners can get the links in the chat, but we'll also have those available in the description of the YouTube channel. 
Um, All right. So, so you you are sharing the screen right now, Marnie. So you would be um, doing the 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 live poll if you uh, or I, let me try to do it over on my side. So I'm going to use a polling tool in Zoom, and I used this earlier today. So I'm going to uh, edit this and give you a different kind of a question. So we can ask just like in the midst of our Hang on just a second. I'm going to create a new poll and uh, the title of my poll. I'll talk while you're typing. Um, oh, okay. So what we're trying to show you is just different ways to um, increase student engagement in a virtual environment. Um, and so one way is the chat box, but sometimes that chat box can get out of control. Uh, you do have controls in the Zoom um, settings to turn off one-to-one -one chat or just turn off the chat box, depending on the age of your students and um, how appropriate they are. Some of the other tools that we mentioned in the last slide have that capability, some don't. I know that Google Meet is working very quickly um, to fix some of those. Like the, you at this point at Google Meet, you do not have the ability to mute a uh, student. So if you've got students out of that moment, you, have, um, you, don't, you don't have the ability to stop that. Whereas in Zoom, you do. Um, I hope Google Meet gets that quickly because I know a lot of teachers rely on that. So another way of getting interaction besides the chat, besides, um, you know, maybe a, a Kahoot, there's also Zoom has a polling feature inside of here. And Corey is just on the fly writing up a poll that should show on our screen. In just one second. Uh, just one okay. second. We've got it. All right. And it's. I'm saving the poll right now and I'm gonna share it out. And, why, uh, and thanks for mentioning that, Andrea. You, you mentioned that they have to be for Zoom. Um, if you're going to be holding meetings, it's 40 minutes or less. Um, all those different account, all those different services have different lengths of time. So when you're using the free account, uh, be aware of that. And again, I said, I'm cheap, cheap, cheap. So I always use the free account. On, except here with Zoom, um, Grand Canyon University did purchase the pro version so we can serve um, more teachers. So we do have longer than 40 minutes here. But for, for I think for you know regular classroom teaching, 40 is plenty. I mean, you can do plenty of other stuff virtually, but 40 minutes live, that's enough. All right, do we got a poll? We do, but I, feel, I don't think I can send it out when you are sharing okay. the screen. So I, we're just kind of figuring I'm this out on the fly. Here. Does that sound like fun? <laughs> All right, so I gave it back to you, so go ahead. All right, so it looks like I can find my other one that I had done. Let me see if I can go uh, jump in and find the one that I have now. So I am editing it and I am saving. Oh, thanks, Nancy. Nancy said during this, oh, and this is going to be a good point. We're going to bring this up at the end. Um, Nancy says that they've waived the time limit for this peer, time period. Um, oh, yeah. cool. That's going to remind me of something at the end of our presentation. So thank you. All right, well, it looks as if my poll has been closed, but some of, oh, there we go. I just needed to, launching. All right, do you see it now? Yep. All right, so how do you increase student engagement in a virtual environment? Give us your poll. How do you use, and I just gave you three options, but I can certainly go back in. And, and so I just created a quick poll on the fly and sent it out to all of you. And I, I can see it. I don't think Marnie can see it. Is that correct, Marnie? I can see. I answered it, but I okay. can't see the results. Okay. So, I, so your host is the one who, so the person who created the poll will be the person who can see the results. And then when I end the poll, then everybody can see the results. So, uh, so at this point, we've got yeah, I'm more than I'm 50 answer people answering. So it's about 49. Actually, uh, yeah, we got 50 people answering. So let's go ahead and I'll, I'll end the poll here and we'll see what you guys think about and those three. Tools. Corey, while you're doing that, I'm going to answer a chat question. Someone yes, said, that, can you explain how to create a poll? Is it on the home screen of the admin? Yes, it's only on the admin. So right now I am a co-host with Corey, but I don't have admin tools on my screen. So down in that bottom bar, um, when you hover over that uh, poll, like the three little more dots, that's where the poll option will show up. So, and let me see if I can't, as I'm doing the poll, let me see if I can share my screen here. I don't think so. And then you can see it. Can you see it? Uh, uh, let's see. 
Here, yeah. here's polling up here. Can you, you, okay, so you can't see what I'm no, looking at. No, it doesn't let you see the Zoom controls when you're in a webinar. Okay, and you know what? That might be a good thing, right? Because I'm the host and maybe you're, as the teacher, you don't want your students to see the question that you're about to, an to, to ask. So I'll stop the share and let Marnie take that back over. Oh, yeah, unless okay. you want me to take it over. I'm happy no, to take I'll, it right I'll go ahead and take over. it over because I want to share a few other documents with everyone. Okay, sounds good. All sounds right, good. let me, where is that? But um, so uh, the question I would have everybody is, uh, that I would pose is, is, can you see the polling results and do you find that that is a helpful tool? Uh, granted, we did this on the fly, so we do that purposely so that you can see exactly how long it takes and how user friendly it is. And, and I'll tell you what, I need user friendly all day long. <laughs> so yeah, Corey, there's a question in the box. I think you just created that poll right then and there, right? The question right. is, do you have to make them ahead of time? Absolutely not. Um, you might want to, <laughs> just to look a little more polished than I did just then. But I'll tell you what, I, I, we do that purposely so that you can see how, how easy or not so easy it is. So yeah, right then. Thank you, Carol, for asking that. All right, so as you've been seeing us use Zoom um, live, and we were pretty heavy Zoom users already, but boy, we've learned a lot in the last couple of weeks having to completely rely on it. Um, we've created for you a, and it does say a pre-launch a pre checklist for Zoom, but I think most of these things can really come in any platform that you're using. Um, and I've created this checklist in, um, in a Google spreadsheet. Again, the bit.ly will be in the chat. We'll have it in the, in the description underneath our, our video. And this is just a checklist that you can go through each time. And I've got it already programmed. If you hit the box, it crosses out the item. If you decide you think of more things, you can add rows um, in between. But if you have other staff that maybe aren't used to hosting things live, this might be a good checklist for them. And I really like, what did I? this one right here prepare family and pets for your recording session so i prepared my dogs but they apparently didn't listen because they're barking up a storm outside and i told this in our last webinar i heard it from <laughs> another teacher they said make sure that you have something behind you when you're hosting with students because sure enough someone in your household in underwear is going to walk in looking for their clean laundry so um, <laughs> just make sure that you are prepared and your household is prepared for that um, Here's a funny aside, Marnie. My husband said to me, I didn't walk by in my underwear, did I? <laughs> when you said that last webinar, I thought it was kind of funny. <laughs> no, and don't do it, please. Thank you. Yes, so, this one is, <laughs> <laughs> so this one again is specific to Zoom, but I think you, if, you're, if your school or your site or your church is using this um, you, or using another platform, you can definitely adjust this, but I, you know, at least everybody's on the same page if you have several people doing the work. You will also notice if you open up that spreadsheet, there's some Zoom task cards. And this, so another teacher that I met online created these. And so if you're a new user or you're training staff who've never used Zoom before, she created this beautiful set of task cards uh, that's where I stole the, uh, that first slide from, just how to use Zoom, how to, different ways that you can join a meeting, um, things to, you know, when you send out that invitation to your students, beautiful, simple. So you'll have a link to that in the spreadsheet and um, in the chat and with YouTube. So I just want to make sure you're aware of that. We're not going to be training you on Zoom because everybody else out there has already created great tools for that. So I'll let you chat about this. So what are some tips besides keeping your family out of the room and your dogs quiet? <laughs> oh, good times, good times. So uh, what we wanna just remember are, are those norms to make sure that we are teaching explicitly how to behave online. Now we call that digital citizenship um, but many students, you know, they, they, they forget. And I think the teachers forget as well. For example, um, how often do you remind your students when they're going to give you a, a show what I know sort of piece? For example, it could be a Google, a Google slide deck. It could be a screencastify. These are tools that we, we will share in, in, in future webinars and tips. 
But when students show what they know, they often go grab a picture, right, from images.google.com. But do they credit that image? Well, that's a piece of social uh, of, of etiquette online that they don't know unless you teach them. So I really do encourage you to teach those norms. So when you're online in a Zoom chat, start off by saying, remember, this is an appropriate uh, place. This is a safe place for us to gather. We're building trust here. Make sure that you use your words wisely. Remember, I'm the teacher and I can boot you out. Maybe that's not the right word, but I can eject you from our chat at any time. So it is really important, especially if those of you who are teaching middle schoolers, yeah, those, those little cherubs, they love to, you know, give you a little run for your money. So make sure that you are stating your norms up front. That fun roll call activity where I did a poll in the very beginning or in the chat, I said, scale of one to five, tell me how you're feeling today. Also, you all answered very nicely, but make sure you say to them, we're not moving on until I hear everybody's response in the chat. Once you count up to say you have 30 students, if you've got 30 answers, that's probably a quick way to do it, but make sure that one person isn't answering five or six times. Question and answers are super great ways to create that environment of, hey, I'm here, you're here, let's have an interaction. And then finally, a brain break. I did a, a tip of the day on um, different focus te techniques. And one of the great brain break uh, tools that I use is called Go Noodle. So you can check that out. If you uh, teach littles, that's a really good, good site. It actually is app.gonoodle.com. And I'll put that in the link here. But that's such a fun just like dance break, brain break. Give them a second to recalibrate and come back to you where you are. I think that's what uh, Marty's, she's doing a little dance, or maybe she's saying, it's time for you to break there, Corey. It's a break dance. Oh, boom. Okay, <laughs> cracking myself up over here. All right, thank you so much. Uh -huh. We'll move on, but just remember those norms. All right, so a couple questions kind of came up about what's available in the free version. I'm a big old cheapy using the free versions, and I'm, if you're anything like me and you've been on social media or your email, everybody and everybody is giving away everything for free right now to teachers, which is fantastic. But you really need to think about this. Um, what are the pros? You're getting access to some great premium tools, um, super creative tools out there. Um, definitely with the live communication tools, uh, WebEx has now opened everything up free. Um, you said Zoom is opening up their pro uh, for free. That's excellent to use right now. But why would I have cons on there? Well, I found, I figured this out. If you use, say, um, Kahoot, if you use their premium uh, content right now, that's great. But if you do not choose to purchase the subscription after their free time closes at the end of May, you may not be able to use some of that content you created using the premium tools. It's not like they will revert back to the free tool level. So I'm really cautious. Every tool that we will use or share here and going forward, like on our webinars, I will only use the free version um, portions of those apps um, because I, I want to be able to continue to use those afterwards because there's no way I'm buying them. Do you want to add to that? <laughs> I love that. Just in case you're wondering, there's no way. But I don't know, maybe this is where we ask Carol, hey Carol, are you interested in buying us all the premium versions of these <laughs> tools? Um, that's where your principal or your leader comes in. Uh, ultimately, my thought there is if the, uh, if the premium version it has something that you really use often, then go ahead and purchase the premium version or ask for your school district to help you purchase that. But ultimately, all the things that we're going to show you, um, tips online, our tip on the demand, and our, um, and our webinars, we're going to use all free because we know how hard it is as teachers. And he, hey, let's add parents, right? Because now parents are going to hear from their kids, hey, my teacher wants me to get the premium version of insert great tool here. No, 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 that, that wouldn't be a great piece. Uh, we don't wanna break anybody's bank here. So I, I agree with Marnie wholeheartedly. There are pros and there are cons. I would say use the free version. And then obviously, if your school uses a, a summative assessment tool like Galileo or, or Infinite Campus or Schoology or one of those they already pay for, find out what your schools already pay for because ultimately that's going to 
guide you into what you can use. So maybe you already have a premium version of Nearpod, for example, and you don't, you don't know that. So ask your media specialist or your um, principal and, and leadership what you already have that's paid for. So I think um, as we're kind of closing, uh, we're kind of coming to a close here. It's 1046. Um, I, I want to launch a, a final poll. So I'm going to go ahead and launch this poll. Uh, let me know if you can't see it. Uh, this is a question that asks, what tools will you use this week to engage your students? Um, so let us know how you feel. Are you going to be using Zoom, Kahoot, video chats? And, you know, it was interesting yesterday. I was on a webinar. My son was on Skype on his using his uh, Skype for piano lesson. Uh, my daughter was using FaceTime to hang out with her buddies. And we were all doing this at the same time. So it can look kind of chaotic, a little circus-like uh, at my house, maybe at your house too, I'm not sure. But we want to remind you that our why, again, is to empower and educate and inspire our community. That's you guys, so that you take action to fulfill your purpose and serve others. At the end of the day, if we don't talk about this webinar being an absolute service, this is why we're here, is to serve, support, and inspire you. And we would love your comments. So we just need to know, what is it that you would like? Um, what would you like to, to see? Uh, more of what do you need help with and and get as specific as possible I think our talent here at Canyon professional development at GCU is to customize to your need You let us know what you need and we have a plethora of individuals that will come alongside you Walk alongside provide you with what you need specifically and help you in your time And that doesn't mean that you know, we're going to bombard you with a lot of resources We're just going to walk alongside and say what are you trying to do and here's a great resource that will help you do that. So I'm looking at this poll. I really appreciate um, that the one out front is not sure yet, but this was helpful. So I'm so glad to hear that it was helpful uh, to you. I'm glad that some of you will use Zoom perhaps as a re as, uh, as recourse from, from watching this webinar. And um, remember, this will all be on YouTube, on our YouTube channel where there are some tips already. We have tips of the day, but also tips on demand, which means we're listening to you. I got a, a, a request for assessment and I went ahead and put a two and a half minute video on Go Formative, which is a great formative assessment tool, super easy and works seamlessly with Google. So if you do use Google Classroom, go ahead and check that tip on demand out today and it's there at YouTube. Uh, Marnie, did you want to say something else before we start to close? So this bottom link is to our evaluation. It is in the chat. I, please don't quite leave yet. And if you don't fill it out this moment, we'd like for you to fill it out within the next hour. The reason is, is we do have an area in there, like what suggestions do you have? That is a perfect place for you to let us know what areas of virtual learning you need assistance with, because we, that's what we're here for. We are here to serve you specifically and quickly. Um, we're not just putting out bulk whatever, um, like you're getting bombarded with. Um, we want to serve your needs. Um, so just make sure you put that in the evaluation. Um, and just coming up for, I think we're just about done in just a moment. For those of you who'd like to stay, we are going to have a, a closing prayer. So if you would like to join us, we'd, we'd really like to have you. Thank you, Marnie. And if you want to click back one slide, there we go. Um, I'm going to invite um, our prayer, uh, prayer chaplain, Dan Egler, to... Um, I like to call him the prayer chaplain of our Canyon uh, professional development team. Uh, uh, Dan, you can introduce yourself, but I'd like to invite Dan to close us in prayer today. And we just, before I, I, I turn it over to Dan, I want to say thank you to everyone who, who has offered tips, tricks, and thank you for serving your communities alongside of us. We truly appreciate you. And with that, Dan, if you want to take it from here, we, uh, we appreciate you being here. Sure. <clears throat> I'd like to appreciate uh, Marnie and for Corey for taking the lead here. You guys did a marvelous job, particularly taking a wealth of information and narrowing it down so it's in uh, bite-sized uh, pieces so it could be utilized. And I recognize there's a host of people behind the scenes helping. So Bethany, Chandra, Amanda, uh, Carol. Put our up in there all of you behind the scenes helping out. So as I close in prayer, there's a passage of scripture that I'd like to just share. Uh, out of Psalms, we're in a very untenuous times, um, times that can make us uh, worry students as well. 
but Psalm 46. Um, in many ways, I think God has asked us to stop and be still. And the, in the verse 10, it says, be still and know that I am God. And I'd like to just leave us with that passage of scripture. Let me just go ahead and pray. Lord God, we come before you this, this morning or afternoon, wherever we are. We know that in this audience, we've got both coasts and even the middle of the country represented. Uh, this is a, a challenging time for our nation, a challenging time for educators and their students. I pray right now that the peace of God would surpass all understanding and that we as your humble servants would be still and know that you are God. We thank you for this time together, a chance that we can communicate over technology and encourage each other. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Dan. We appreciate so much that you are here with us and that you're guiding us in prayer and that you're reminding us at this moment that God is our strength. And that is what we believe here at Grand Canyon University is to take that strength.